Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Between the Sharks. Here we are again at, you know, oh no. Here we are, let's, let's just get inside. So now that we're slightly undercover, we're at the brand new to us garage. And this thing is essentially gonna have to function as the command center as we try to figure out what we're doing with the property and how we're gonna fix it and what we need to do to fix it. So we need to clean it out. That's just, it's got like step one. We need a place to start to function. So the bad news is you see, it's uh, rainy and cold. Dropped 25 degrees overnight and started pouring. So I guess we're gonna find out all the places this thing leaks. Put that on the list too. The other issue, gang, is we can't see nothing. Bam, it ain't much, but I worked real hard at it. Let's take a look. Guys, it is a gloomy and gross day here, and we have operated by flashlight and sunlight in this place. I uh, borrowed some of my LED Home Depot lights. These things are great. I've talked about them on other episodes. I use them everywhere when I need light in a hurry. As silly as it is, I'm pretty excited to clean this place out. It has a lot of potential. I haven't even measured it. I don't know how big it is, but there's plenty of space, but there's junk everywhere. As we know, it's already been ransacked and all that stuff, but I haven't been able to see it. In the other video where we went through this for the first time, it was all by flashlight. So this is actually kind of nice. I don't know if we'll find anything great or just be able to see what we're doing, but either way, this is a vast, vast improvement. So let's take a quick look around, see if anything jumps out at us that we may not have seen before. And then we're gonna pick a corner, probably that one, and like work our way out of the building. Clutter, not clutter, clutter. Carburetors, plug wires, regulators, really neat cabinet. I think these clothes can all, <whistles> tires don't need to be in here. They just take up space. They're also pretty bald, so I'm not really sure what the impetus for saving them here in the corner was, but you know, they're there. Jack stands, oil jugs, a lot of battery cables. Battery cables and, yeah, battery cables. We know that's our rag bin. We've got our inline six Chevrolet motor. I haven't looked at a casting date, haven't looked at anything on it yet, but we'll dive into that at some point. Oh yeah, the wiper blade collection. That's funny. Oh look, where are you? That's cool. Harley Davidson motorcycles beer, unopened, 1985. That's a keeper. That's actually pretty neat. We got our dual point distribute. Is there two? Wait, what? No wait, maybe that's a regular Mallory. We'll get into that in a minute. I can't remember. I know the Excel was also a dual point starter fluid. We'll deal with this. I'm not sure why that's falling down because the leaks appear to be right there where the hole is which is leaking right here which is something we got to address but i will say that the rest of the garage is remarkably not as leaky as i thought maybe also got some mess that i left here from our lawnmower extravaganza if i'm being honest with you i've never really messed with lawnmowers but that was pretty fun so uh, maybe we'll do a little bit more on those because A, they're super useful, and B, I think I'm bolstered by a little bit of success. What are you? Oh, mirror. Did I find that already? Does anyone remember? More wheels and tires, beauty rings, broken camshaft. What else we got? Ons and ends, ons and ends. Weird backpack vacuum. So far, the Harley beer can is kind of the win for new stuff. Then we need a plan, plan of attack here. I think that's just clearing the ground so that we trip over less stuff. I wanted to start at the workbenches, but again, that just doesn't make any sense. Doesn't look like much, but we're making a dent. We're just gonna keep moving onward. Getting those tires out of here is gonna make this suddenly significantly larger. It, well, larger feeling, I think. All right, let's, let's get her done. here but there's like very few gems that shouldn't really surprise you but what is here is still weird it's like a ton of busted lock cylinders like a ton that are all in the trash now ton of old radio knobs there's a brand new chrome transmission transmission dipstick for a turbo 400 
We got those laying around, so we'll hang on to that. Old starters scattered all over the place. Like, I mean, small block Chevy starters just, they're not rare is what I'm saying. So we're making a big old scrap pile because I'm not going to pay to throw something out that somebody will pay me for. But again, you know, it's just a lot of stuff. It's just strange. You try to get into the mind of a fellow when you're looking at all the stuff they collected. And it's like, there's this whole tool thing full of whatever the sway bar bushing situations are. I can't tell if they're used or not, but you know, what I'm saying is they're there. There's like one, two, three starters. I already took two out. These are missing their solenoids. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I just don't, I don't quite understand what I'm seeing. The old radios, I did throw out a ton of chrome radio knobs. They were all over the place. Kind of like this, you know? Seem busted, don't know if they're, like they're not even complete. Like, did this guy steal car stereos in the 80s? Like, I'm not trying to defame anybody, just saying, remember when that was a thing? Nuts, bolts, odds, ends, wiper blades. Look, I'm guilty of keeping a lot of junk around, but it's like, from trauma of being like, man, I remember when I had one of those and then having to search hardware stores and the internet and whatever else trying to find another one. But this stuff, like, I don't know. Maybe you old timers know. Was this stuff more rare back in the day? Harder to get? More of a reason to keep your hands on it? No, I don't, I don't know, I don't know. Full of, full of oily rags and rodent nests. <sighs> Gotta say we're making significant improvements. I am super curious to go through what's on all these shelves, but gotta keep eyes on the prize. I would say with floor clearing and stuff, we're about halfway there. We got this side done getting into this wet spot which again it's just that one hole in the roof and you can see the branch that caused the damage anyway so i guess we'll get up there and patch it or cover it or do something to keep this from continuing but all in all given the looks of this place it is a lot more watertight than i expected make no mistake about that let's not quitting time is what I'm saying. Let's keep going. It's interesting in here. It feels kind of like a crappy old movie set, but it's all real with the vines coming in and like there's like marks on the wall from a dog i guess that was just i don't know i don't know what it was doing but it was here and then like and i can't help but think what a pressure washing on these walls would do i bet it would just completely change this place over don't have any water here at the property yet so it's not really gonna happen but uh yeah the mine can wander imagine how much better it could be but for now I wouldn't say we're on the home stretch, but we're on this last corridor here. Then we gotta start tackling workbenches and see if we can clear out some space. It is interesting how these things are rotting away, but we'll address that here in a minute when we get back there. For now. Gang, that thing is no joke. Vintage backpack vacuum like it's just i don't want to say it's getting weirder but it feels like it's getting weirder a bunch of bmw shift knobs but then i found these magazines a newsweek and an auto week one's dated 2000 one's dated 2002 so maybe i mean they don't seem particularly special to me so it's not as if they were saved i don't think but nobody's cleaned this place out in a minute check this out old school black and decker jigsaw like it's just i feel like i'm time traveling here 
Also, I was checking this thing out and I can't, there's some boxes around here labeled like 72 Corvette parts, which makes me think that that bumper is 72 and so is that rack, the luggage rack that goes on the back of them. I feel like this is too, but somebody correct me in the comments. But, A, I don't know why there's a hole in the center, but check this out. I flipped it over and right there, the text says, like hell it's yours. So I guess if somebody stole this dude's center cap, he could convince them to pop it off and, and say, hey, like hell it's yours. That's pretty good. I guess that was happening a lot back in the day. More car stereos and amplifiers. What was going on in here? Does anyone know? I have no idea what's in that bin. I have no idea what's in there except that puller. Gang, times have just changed. Super Chevy from 1985. First of all, magazine cost two American dollars, but check that out. Mild to wild, 325 horse, 396 build. I think it's super cool, but just compared to horsepower you can buy cheap today, that's just, I don't know, I think it's super neat. Anyway, I'm trying to pull all the scrap out of this, which is definitely slowing things down. Uh, mostly because I got to tote all that stuff to the dumpster, which is a hike, and the heavier it is, the worse it is. But also, like I said, there's a lot that's going to get scrapped around here, and why throw out something that, you know, they'll pay to take, I guess, even if it is a little more work. I don't know if it's any more work. It's just dividing the work into two different piles of work. Got to keep going. I'm fading a little bit. That's not good. We got we got a lot to go. getting somewhere the floor is you know thinking about being a floor like you can even see it in some places which is relatively impressive uh through this last batch of stuff down here i didn't find anything too neat but i think i think these are fake hood pins they're plastic so i guess you just stick them on and they have fake screws i've never seen anything like it but there's a set of them but it makes me think that because there's a set of legit hood pins in a box but this is the neat stuff right here in original General Motors boxes, somebody can put in the comments what year Z28 emblem that is. That's pretty rad. And then down, then down in here, we have some 396 emblems. Pretty cool in their original General Motors boxes. One of them had a price. It was like nine bucks with the part number. I don't know if they're original new old stock parts or what the situation is, but they're still pretty cool. We wall hangers or, you know, we'll give them to somebody that needs them, something like that. A little late in the program to start talking about intentions here, gang, but the goal is to ultimately start fixing the house that's on the property at some point. So this garage needs to be home base for home improvement projects. So basically, if it's not a valuable car part or whatever, it needs to go and we need to create storage for tools and plumbing supplies, electrical supplies, materials, all that type of stuff. In addition, we got to store these things. May need to try to fix one more lawnmower before we're through around here. But basically what I'm saying is this is not going into service as a shop for automobiles just yet. While I say that, one of you guys can remind me that there's this Datsun pickup truck right here and a guy can only resist that temptation for so long. So bear with me, because there's definitely gonna be, there will definitely be a point at which we drag that son of a gun in here and see if we can get it to run, if we can get it to move. Although we do have some things that can probably coax it to move that I need to learn how to use. So stay tuned for that as well. Well, you and I probably agree on this. I think the exciting stuff is over there, but unfortunately for us, the logical place to start is right over here, because A, there's not that much stuff on these shelves yet, and B, we can start to move things from old Cluttersville over there that we want to keep, hopefully to some organized fashion and make sense of it. Because I don't, I think there were some methamphetamine enthusiasts that came through here at some point to ransack the place and look for stuff. But what is still kind of in place, there's not a whole lot of rhyme or reason to that either. So unless they took the time to disorganize everything and then put it back on the shelves, in addition to trashing the place, I think the previous owner was about as organized as I am on any given day. 
Also, if you guys need battery cables, I've found a lot. There's actually more hanging on the other wall over there. Not sure what this guy was doing, but he had charging system issues, I think. All right, the sun is peeking through, but it's getting late in the afternoon and I'm bushed. So let me give you the general of what we got going on here. There is some neat stuff here. We got more small block Chevy starters that are in pieces. All that's going in the scrap pile. They're not that hard to get these days. We're not gonna be rebuilding any of that stuff. We need to minimize the amount of projects in our projects, you know what I'm saying? These bumper guards are pretty cool. Maybe you guys recognize them. They're not something I'm familiar with, but that says 69 cam right left. So I'm guessing they're 69 Camaro, which is kind of cool. I don't know what we're gonna do with it. Found a bell crank. I like these things. I keep them around. I find them useful. Uh, in these two original boxes were two sets of kick plates, just kind of generic pickup truck kick plates. Um, not in love with a diamond plate, but those are kind of neat. So I don't, I've never heard of that brand. I think they came and went before my time, but in the original boxes, that's, that's kind of neat. So we'll jam them back in there. The guy's got a million sets of push rods. Um, I couldn't figure it out. And then it occurred to me, like, maybe they're all different lengths. If he was setting up different cams and different, whatever setups, uh, not my bag, not like I, I build stock engines. If anything, I don't really build them. I buy them and ship them in cars. That's about all I do. But, uh, but yeah, there's a water pump and a bunch of pulleys and brackets. This box has a brand new water pump in it. It looks real rough, but you can see there's never been any gaskets on there and it's labeled 69C10. So it's got more pulleys and brackets. For the regular folks watching at home, maybe this isn't a big deal, but for you car folks that you know, like trying to find pulleys for an engine that you're putting together is, it's a job, man. And it gets really expensive. It adds up really quick. So we'll be hanging on to all of that stuff. It's just confirming what I know to be, well, what I believe to be true already about the C10 stuff. So again, I'm hoping those disc brakes and spindles are also C10. This guy was pretty good at labeling stuff. So I'll dig in there in a little bit and see. It's not really my priority now. I'm just, they're not gonna go anywhere. I'm gonna try to hang on to that stuff. There is a box of miscellaneous Harley brake parts and whatever. Um, I'm getting rid of all the old paint because it's been here a long, long, long time. And I just need the room on the shelves to organize some of this stuff. Again, I'm trying to save anything interesting or valuable and trying to get rid of absolutely everything else. The last thing I need is more like kind of okay junk. So we got a lot to go and the scrap pile is growing like these blower motors and all this stuff. That's all scrap right there. All right, we can kind of get into this area over here. We're gonna keep working around. We're on to this and this and this and then that's gonna be a whole thing. I think I'm doing pretty well considering my own hoarder tendencies. It's if I think it could be useful, I try to keep it. But in this case, bits and bobs of hardware and stuff like that, I'm never gonna get through and organize this. If you've seen a lot of the videos, you'll know that my shop gets cluttered very quickly with stuff, even though I have all the bolt bins and everything a guy could ever want. I just don't have the motivation to use them. So in this case, I know I'm never gonna go through this hardware and sort it. And a lot of it, especially over here is sitting in puddles of water and stuff like that. So we'll go through and make sure there's no like hot rod gold hiding in there. But otherwise, I think we're gonna keep increasing our trash pile and increasing our scrap pile. It's getting heavy, gang. Guys, I don't understand. This area was like 90% lug nuts, which I lose lug nuts. I can never find them when I need them. This guy had hundreds and hundreds, just bins and bins and bins full of lug nuts. Most of them look like import stuff, but save some because I'm short a bunch of lug nuts, you know. I don't want to call it the home stretch because, you know, we're not going to be like done, done, but we are in contention for this being somewhat functioning. I wouldn't call it tidy, but you know, it's all relative. So tidy for considering what it was. 
Haven't found any new gems really, but we'll keep digging. There might be something good in here. Probably not. Not a whole lot on that workbench of note, but I will say this is a pretty funny koozie. It says uh, s and muffler and brakes. No need to call. We'll hear you coming. That's funny. Uh, also, notice there's no area code, so that goes back a little bit of a ways there. Also, somewhere around here, I found, what is it, this bag or this bin? One of these things, this whole tub is full of starter bolts, which considering how many starters we found, that doesn't really surprise me, but yet it baffles me. Like how, why do you have all these starter bolts? Why do you have all these starters? Why do you have all these lug nuts? Why do we have all these windshield wipers? Like it's all kind of useless stuff. And I can't imagine any of those things ever having been rare because they're all Chevy stuff. Well, the lug nuts are mostly import stuff, but where did the wheels go, right? Like, how do you have so many lug nuts and, and no wheels? We've cleaned off this metal bench. We're on to kind of this home stretch here. I can't figure out what's going on. Like the legs are clearly rotting off. That's, that's obvious, but why it's slanting, I just don't quite get. Cause it's not like those legs aren't on the ground. It's just that those legs are off the ground. So. Anyway, we're going to do the full junk shuffle, which is what we do on this channel an awful lot. And I'm going to take all this junk and kind of spread it out over that new table, that thing, which I can't figure out what it was ever built to do. And uh, our semi kind of thing clean over yonder. And then uh, we'll assess our scrap bin and see where we are. It's getting late, gang. I am running out of Sunday. <laughs> Guys, considering we're digging through all this stuff, you'd think there'd be maybe a little bit more better stuff hanging out in there. It's so much. Just bins and bins of hardware that's unsorted. I don't really have anything here, so it can live for a while, and I'm not jumping in the truck to go to the scrap man today, but it's just... Mountains of stuff. I'm trying to not let this be my future, you know, like just disorganized stuff everywhere. My own shop is kind of disorganized, as you guys know, because I like try to go hard at it and then make a mess and then eventually I'll stop and clean it up. But I got to get through all of this. And I also, I feel like this thing is dissolving into the earth at the same rate. I think there's just a screw or a nail right back here that if I 86 it, the whole table will just fall to being level again, which is kind of funny. So we'll try that here in a minute. And then this thing, got to go. I have been at this many more hours than I hoped I would be, but I'm not really surprised. Uh, I think we're like on hour eight or so, which isn't terrible, but it is Sunday. So I got to get her to a stopping point and we're almost somewhere. But for my next trick, I'm trying to use this thing that I found to pry this thing off of this thing. And hopefully this table will just magically level itself out. This is one of those, hey y'all, watch this moments. Ta-da! It just had one nail barely hanging on. Now, granted, she ain't level yet, but it's not floating as bad as it was. This thing is definitely destined for the trash, but building a new workbench is not really on my to-do list right now. So that's a little bit better than it was. So here are the finds of the day. It ain't much, but it's something. We got a Harley Davidson beer from 1985 and a Harley Davidson beer from 1987. Best part is there's still beer. That's funny. This engine cleaner is pretty cool too. So it's, uh, I don't know, old school snake oil and this thing, which I thought we ought to try, cause you know, I don't think it'll work, but if it did, it would be pretty neat, right? God. Yeah, no. Whoa! That's pretty cool, actually. 
All right, that thing will take your fingers right off. Or try to eat the cord. Okay, we'll, we'll get you sorted right out. It's fine. machines were universal. Turns out it's not the case. So I guess that one's gonna stay right there. decidedly better in here. Is it perfect? Is it tidy? No, 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 no. But gang, it's way better than it was and now can begin to be a base of operations. It'll continue to take shape. I'll probably end up getting rid of more stuff over time. We got a ton that has to go to the scrapyard. We have a ton that went into the dumpster already. And, uh, but yeah, now, now we can do some little things, not out here in the grass. We can keep our tools, secure and dry. There's a lot coming up. So if you enjoy this kind of stuff, please consider subscribing. We're gonna do a ton of work here. We're gonna do a ton of work on these machines and we're gonna get back to hot rodding one day too, if you're into that. So if you're new to the channel, thank you very much for subscribing. If you're old school to the channel, thank you very much for sticking with me and we will see you next time on Between the Sharks. Good luck on your projects out there.